Lift Him Up, August 12 Transformation Through Christ Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. A great change takes place in the character of him who accepts Christ. For if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. When we see those who profess Christianity manifesting the old carnal desires in word and action, we may know that they are not in Christ, that the transforming grace of Christ has not touched the soul, molded the character, and cleansed the defilement of the heart. Those who have an experimental knowledge of the grace of Christ will feel their obligation to Him to be representatives of His power to the world. They will realize that He who knew no sin was made to be sin for them, that they might be made the righteousness of God in Him. An appreciation of this fact will enable us to get correct views of the work of our Redeemer. True believers will realize that while they were separated from Him through impenitence and sin, He did not forsake them, but rather interceded for them, that they might have the benefits of the salvation which He had purchased for them at an infinite sacrifice. In accepting Christ, they know that they must come out from the world and be separate, and touch not the unclean, that they may be the children of God. They must love Christ supremely. It is impossible for finite minds to make a just estimate of the love of God toward His fallen creatures. We are ever in danger of forgetting this great love, because we fail to meditate upon it and allow ourselves to become absorbed in the things of this world. We permit our hearts to be divided by placing our affections on things below, and so separate from the true source of happiness. Christ should be the theme of our thoughts, the object of our tenderest affection. We should let our minds dwell upon the precious characteristics of our Lord, we should contemplate the rich promises of His Word. We should meditate upon the glories of heaven. We should not be satisfied with but occasional glimpses of our Redeemer, but our minds should be stayed upon God by continual trust in His Word. We should search the Scriptures diligently in order that we may have an understanding of the claims that Christ has upon us, and that we may have right views of the truth. Our wills must be subdued and brought into harmony with the will of God. Precious light has been permitted to shine upon our pathway, and around us are the angels of heaven who are interested in our welfare. The love of Christ manifested toward us in his life of humiliation and self-denial, in his death on Calvary, should call forth songs of gratitude from our lips. The hope of His soon coming should fill us with sacred joy 